For more than a century, visitors to the southwest have been able to enjoy the hospitality of Caves House. Now, you may ask yourself why it's been built so far from stunning Yelling Up Beach. Well, the name says it all. Caves House was built by the government to accommodate tourists to the nearby Yelling Up Caves. But until recently, visitors here have only been getting half the experience, half the story, and they've been calling it by the wrong name. Not anymore because now there's an award-winning local guide offering the chance to see the cave through the eyes of the traditional custodians of the area, the Wadundi. When I was a little girl, we knew this place as Yelling Up Cave. Now it's Nilgi Cave. Who is Nilgi? Well, Nilgi is a good spirit that's connected to this cave and Yelling Up means place of caves. I can tell you more about it. Okay. Before we find out more about Nilgi, Josh points out the tree he made his hiking stick from. And how about this one? This is Mary, and Mary means blood tree. It does have a lot of blood, blood, doesn't it? Losing out of the tree. Yeah. This is all medicine. When we were kids, we'd use a lot of this medicine. Our grandmother would give it to us. We use the bark for fire lighting, and we extract oil from the leaves over the fire. Every plant has a use and a purpose. And then right in front of us, the story of Nilgi. When there was only Aboriginal people living right throughout the area here, at one point they believed an evil spirit named Walgine lived in the cave. And uh, he'd sit there in the dark, draw energy from the crystal, come out at night time, curse the water holes, food become scarce and drew unruly people into the cave, never to be seen again. So the Wadandi elders summons a good spirit, Nyulgi, burst up in the cave, confronted Walgine, the evil spirit, and for three days they battled within the cave. Finally, Walgine was pushed out of the cave, beaten and frightened and begged for mercy. The spirit stopped the storm. Nyugi told Walgine he could go, providing he never come back to this area again. The cave became known as Nyugi's Nyulian Ma, resting place of the good spirit Nyugi. Time to check out this cave. Oh my goodness. Imagine exploring down here without electricity or torches. There are 350 steps to the floor of the cave, but the steps Josh is more interested in are the footsteps of his ancestors. Time to set the scene. That sound in this space. Mm. Well, it is a natural amphitheatre and it's one of my favourite places to be able to play. The sound bounces off the formations in here and creates quite an ambience, and that's why we call it the amphitheatre. Well, this wasn't a traditional camping cave because there's a 17 metre drop at the entry point. Well, the cave is uh, roughly about 500,000 years old. They're all limestone caves in the region, which mostly consists of shell, sand, water and calcium. Many years ago, this cave was full of water, and that's what's created all the formations in the flowstone. Well, when the water seeps through the soil, mixes with the calcium limestone bicarbonate, creating calcite crystal, grows a centimetre every hundred years. Stalactites running down from the ceiling, dripping, hitting the bottom, creating a stalagmite coming up. Over time, they form columns, running sideways, shawls, and lots of halictites and formations in the cave. Exploring a cave is always a magical experience. And with someone like Josh leading the expedition, it just gives it that little bit more, those layers of complexity. You get to hear the stories of the old people, the history, and that music out of this world. It's really made this cave come alive. It's Nilgi's cave. It's pretty special.